Rob here, dtrailer.com, and today you're going to be taking a look at the Hopkins plug-in simple wiring harness with a four-pole flat trailer connector on our 2017 Infiniti QX70. Our wiring is designed to stay on the outside of the vehicle whenever we're using it, but it is going to store on the inside. It's going to provide us the four-pole flat trailer connector so we can have all the required lights by law to get down the road safely, like our tail lights, our turn signals, and our brake lights. It is going to have a dust cover that's going to be included with the kit, so it's going to keep all that dirt, debris, and moisture out of the connector. However, whenever we're not using it, it's actually going to store inside by the spare tire. We can simply just grab our wire, tuck it underneath the spare tire, and be ready for us whenever we do need to use it. And if we want to drop it out so we can use it, simply just pull it out. Make sure we're on either side of the latch mechanism itself, and the weather stripping here will provide enough cushion where the wire won't get damaged. Then we can simply just close the hatch and we can hook up our trailer. As far as the installation goes, we're not going to have to cut or splice any of our factory wires. We're going to have a T-connector that's going to be behind our taillight on each side that's going to get the signals. Now our wiring harness does have a converter box that's going to do two things for us. It's going to take those signals from our taillights, convert it into a working signal for our trailer, but it's also going to prevent any kind of back feeding or electrical problems on our vehicle. If there was something to happen on the trailer, it's going to prevent it from damaging the electrical system from that back feeding. We're also going to have a power wire that we're going to run from the converter box all the way to the battery. That's going to make sure that we don't overload the power circuits on our tail lights so we get power directly from the battery with a fuse holder in place, again, to protect our vehicle. So whether you're towing a jet ski, a boat trailer, a camper, or even just a utility trailer, our Hopkins wiring is gonna be a great way to get those signals to your trailer so we can be safe and legal. But now that we've seen what our wiring looks like and gone over some of the features, let's get installed together. To begin our installation, we wanna open up our rear hatch. We're gonna open up the cargo door that covers our spare tire and we wanna make sure to pull that out. Now, if you have this subwoofer in your car, you wanna disconnect it. There's a gray plug you're gonna pull out and we can pull the whole assembly out. Next, we're gonna to need to remove the threshold plate. So if we kind of just grab the edge of it like this, we can pull up slightly. And you're just gonna to wanna to pull up, releasing the clips. Kind of work your way across until we can get it to come out and then we'll set it aside. Now the clips that are being held in the body, these may come out or they might get stuck. And that's all right, just go ahead and pop them out of the body if they get stuck. You can see it's got that little ridge on there. Just want to slide it back into position. It'll lock right back into place. If we move to the outside edge, right by the door opening of our cargo area, we're going to have a couple tie down hooks, one on each side. We want to open up the hook and we grab a flat blade screwdriver and we're going to pop the cover open and that'll expose the nut that's holding it in place. So then we can grab a 10 millimeter socket and we'll pull it out. We'll pull the entire hook out and we'll set it aside or we'll remove the one on the other side as well. Now if we come down by the latch mechanism underneath where our threshold plate was, we'll have another push pin holding this tray that our spare tire goes around. Now the main goal here is so we can get behind this side panel behind the tail light. So we're going to loosen this panel up so we have enough room to move this panel to the side. So you just want to grab a trim panel tool, you can use a flat blade screwdriver. Whatever you have available, just come underneath that push pin so we can lift it up, come over to the side. Again, just kind of lift it up out of the way. And then we're going to start peeling our side panel away from the car so we can get behind it. And there's just some push pins in there, so you just want to work your way up so we can loosen them up and eventually get behind there. Now we really don't have enough room to get our hands in there or so that you can see what we're doing. So we're gonna move farther up on our trunk pan where all our floor coverings are and we're gonna remove these tie down hooks that are towards the front of the vehicle. Now they're gonna work the same way. We'll just flip our tie down hook up, flip the cover open, and we'll get a 10 millimeter socket and pull it out. And there's gonna be one on the other side as well. Now just the inside of where those tie down hooks were, we're gonna have a couple bolts that are holding the straps on for our cover plate. 
We're gonna pull those out so we can get the cover plate all the way out. So we'll use a 12 millimeter socket to pull them out. There's gonna be one bolt on the left hand side and one bolt on the right hand side. And we'll pull out that cover and set it aside. Now right behind that bolt for our cover, we're gonna have another bolt that's holding this tray in place. And we're gonna have it, it's gonna be right here in this little indentation, it'll be on both sides. We're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket, and we'll pull both of those out. Now we can grab each piece of that cover underneath. Grab the right side, and we'll lift it up. And if you come to the back here, right by the back of the seats, you can actually just grab this cover as well. It's got some push pins in it. We can pull it out and make it a little bit easier to get that cover out. At the very back of our panel, underneath that cover that was right behind the rear seat, we're gonna have one more bolt that it's gonna be holding down the passenger side panel but our driver's side panel is underneath it, so we have to pull it out. So we'll use that 10 millimeter socket. And now we should be able to pull the entire panel out. And over on the driver's side, we are gonna have to move our wiring for the subwoofer. So you wanna be mindful of that when you pull your panel out. So now at this point, we wanna open up that panel that's on the driver's side, and we'll find our taillight wiring, it's gonna be really close towards the top, right above our taillight in here. We need to disconnect this, so we'll push in on the little tab and pull our connector out. Then we can grab our new Hopkins harness. And we wanna grab the end that has the red, yellow, and brown wires on it. Now our plugs are gonna match up, so we wanna take the one we just unplugged, plug it in, make sure it locks in place, and then we'll take the other end and plug it directly into our tail light. With our driver's side plugged in, we're gonna grab the green wire, route it across the back of the threshold here. I always suggest using zip ties to secure it to some factory wiring, and we're gonna plug it in the exact same way behind the passenger side. Now, if we look at our converter box, we're gonna have a white wire with a ring terminal. This is gonna be our ground wire. If we look down from our tail light, we'll find our factory ground. It's a lot easier to use a factory ground than having to use a self-tapping screw and put extra holes in our car. So I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to pull that bolt out. Slide the bolt around the ring terminal. Now this one is a little bit tight because it has some teeth on it, but if we can get it started, should be able to thread it in by hand and get it to go all the way through. If not, you can always use a socket. But if it's still not going through, a quick trick, we'll take our bolt out. And grab a pair of cutters. I'm actually gonna cut a notch in there so it's a C shape. So now, we can put our bolt back in and we can actually slide our ring terminal around it that way it'll still make contact, but we don't have to worry about cramming the bolt through the ring terminal. Whenever you do put your ground back, you wanna make sure that you put your factory grounds back in place as well. So I'm just gonna loosely get my bolt started. But make sure I have enough room to slide my ring terminal over it, and then I'll tighten it down using that socket. We're gonna have one more wire coming off our converter box. It'd be a red wire with the butt connector pre-installed. We wanna grab the length of red wire out of our kit. I'm gonna connect it to the other end of our butt connector and crimp it down. Now this red wire is gonna to need to run up to the battery. So we need to find a spot either so we can get to the outside of our vehicle and run along the frame, or we can run it along the interior, but then we're gonna to have to go through the firewall. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route my wire towards the passenger side, and if we look underneath this module box right here, we're gonna have a grommet that we can easily poke our wire through, and then we'll run it along the frame. 
When you're routing your wire though, you do want to stay away from any heat sources or anything that may potentially damage the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and then I'll show you how I routed everything. So my wire dropped out right here from that grommet. Started going towards the front of the car, going over all the subframes and the rear axle. Came down by my fuel tank, followed it along these factory lines going through the brackets so it'll hold the wire securely and also using zip ties where necessary. Followed it around and actually having my wire come following these lines here. But I went ahead and dropped down an airline tube from the top so I can pull all the slack up into the engine bay by the battery. So my airline tube I dropped down toward the passenger side of the motor. Again, you just want to be careful, make sure you don't have it rubbing against anything that will cause any damage. I want to pull all the slack up. We can remove the airline tube. And it's not a bad idea to look underneath and make sure you don't have a wad of wire that will get caught while we're driving. But if we come all the way over to the passenger side, really close to the firewall, we're going to have this cover. Lift the two tabs up, pull the cover out of the way, and then it'll expose our battery. Now, I'm going to look for a way to get this wire inside without having to go over the top. It'll just give it a little bit cleaner appearance, and it'll help hide the wire and protect it rather than trying to go over the top, having the hood and everything else close on it. I went ahead and put a zip tie right here on this anchor point. That way I don't have to worry about the wire falling down. And then I just kind of grabbed here, lifted up on this panel, and it gave me just enough room to sneak the wire in. I want to go ahead and grab our fuse holder. Now it's already going to have a ring terminal and a buck connector in place. So I'm going to trim the excess wire off of my red wire. It's always a good idea to give yourself a little bit of excess. But we'll strip back the end of our wire and we'll crimp on our fuse holder. And grab a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna loosen the nut on top of the positive post of the battery. Now before we put our ring terminal in place, you wanna open up the fuse holder and you wanna remove the fuse in there so we don't have any chances of blowing it. We'll remove the fuse, slide our ring terminal over, then we can replace the nut. Now that everything's securely connected, put our fuse holder back in place, now we can move back to the back and start reassembling the back hatch. And once you have all your panels back in place, you just want to make sure that you leave your four pole wire hanging out by the spare tire so we have plenty of room to drop it out the back hatch so we can use it. But now we can take the included dust cover, we'll slide it on to our four pole wire on the end of the connector. Now we need to make sure that all of our circuits are working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my four pole tester. And then I'll run through the lights and verify that they're all working properly. So if I turn my headlights on, we can see that our taillight function is working, as well as the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and our brakes. All we have left to do now is hook up to our trailer and hit the road. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com, and that'll finish up your look at the Hopkins Plug-In Simple Wiring Harness with a four-pole flat trailer connector on our 2017 Infiniti QX70.